My name is Yozo Otsuchi from Kurasu. I recently had the opportunity to visit Chicago for the SCA 2024 event, and I'm excited to share my experience and thoughts on Chicago's coffee culture. Let me take you through what I felt and discovered about Chicago's specialty coffee scene. This trip was my second visit to the U.S. post-COVID following last year's SCA event in Portland. It was also my first time exploring Chicago since I started diving deep into coffee. I arrived with an open mind with just some knowledge of names like Intelligentsia Coffee, Metric, and the Japanese-owned Sawada Coffee. One of my first nights here, I attended an eclectic party hosted by Stand Art Magazine celebrating their 10th anniversary and Malconic, held in the Intelligentsia Roastery. It was a great way to kick off the communal spirit of the specialty coffee community here in Chicago. From there, it was time to see what the coffee scene was all about. I stayed in the heart of downtown near Millennium Park, surrounded by numerous coffee chains. My first stop was Fairgrounds Coffee and Tea. They have several locations around town and heard that they were a loved local establishment. This particular spot was a small kiosk in the gorgeous 1890s Gothic building. Despite its size and only one barista in the bar, Many people would line up, a testament to its popularity among locals. I really felt bad for the burster here. The next stop was exciting, one of the few specialty coffee shops in downtown that stands out and it is of course Intelligentsia Coffee. Founded in 1995 here in Chicago, Intelligentsia Coffee has been in the leader of the specialty coffee movement. In 2015, they were acquired by Pete's Coffee and Tea, but continue to be the forefront of specialty coffee in the States. So okay, I had mixed feelings about my experience at Intelligentsia. Perhaps my expectations were too high, but what stood out was the inconsistency in the extraction and customer service. The shops, they were beautiful, and there were a big crowd queuing for their morning coffee. I had an espresso, but unfortunately it was sour and under extracted. The other shop at the iconic Monodoc building was much better in terms of the coffee quality, but here the customer service was really underwhelming. As someone who understands the challenges of maintaining consistency in the larger establishment, it was still disappointing to experience these issues. Next up on my tour was Metric Coffee. It's all about sustainability and community here, and they become a rising presence in the Chicago specialty coffee scene. I saw their cups and coffees everywhere during the SCA Expo and supporting events. Founded in 2013, the name Metric reflects both the system of measurement and the technical roots of their craft, symbolized by their vintage 1961 German Probat UG15 roaster. The space, primarily a roastery with just a standing coffee bar with some outdoor seating, had a raw industrial community vibe. This is a small customer space, but I had an amazing filtered coffee and got a glimpse of Chicago's newer specialty coffee scene. Next, I visited Sawada Coffee. Sawada Coffee is a favorite spot for locals, not just for their coffee, but also for their Instagram-worthy counter space. This is the first US coffee shop for World Latte Art champion, Japanese Hiroshi Sawada. Sawada Coffee's industrial style shop features a wall of windows with bright light coming in, a custom painted espresso machine, a wooden ping pong table, and even a punching bag. The curated menu offers espresso and matcha based drinks, including their famous military latte, a blend of matcha, espresso, and steamed milk. I enjoyed the ambience, artwork, and lively vibe. While it's a small takeaway and standing space, it's clear that this is a place where locals come to hang out and enjoy a cup of coffee. The next stop was Dark Matter Coffee. 
I didn't know much about them before coming to Chicago, but I quickly discovered that they had a cult following, which was evident from their shop presence. As you step inside, you can immediately sense their distinct style. While the coffee was a bit too dark and bold for my personal taste, I can see how it would be appealing for so many. The staff were all friendly, passionate, adding to the welcoming atmosphere. From their bold branding to their unique flavor profile, Dark Matter Coffee exemplified how having a strong individual style and truly believing in it can lead to success. Drip Coffee Collective is a vibrant addition to Chicago's West Loop. Despite being around at that time for over just a few months, the shop blends into its surroundings, feeling like a long-standing fixture in the neighborhood. Drip Coffee Collective strives to do more than just offer coffee. They have made it their mission to support their immediate community and serve as an incubator for Filipino and Black artists. Drip Coffee Collective showcases a variety of roasters, offering a diverse array of coffee selections. I really appreciated that they were trying to add a different flair. Finally, Dayglow brings a splash of LA vibe to Chicago's coffee scene. This shop, through their subscription service, showcases a diverse range of offerings from global roasters, like Leaves Coffee from Tokyo, adding an international selection to its menu. They have many quirky signature drinks, which was quite interesting. And also, exciting news, Kurasu will soon be featured in Dayglow's subscription service, so be sure to check them out. So, how did I find Chicago? In comparing Japan to Chicago, I couldn't help but to notice the differences in availability of specialty coffee brands to the mass. In Japan, the market is typically dominated by big players like UCC with limited options for smaller independent roasters. But despite its diverse offerings, I didn't find anything radically new or groundbreaking in terms of coffee itself. The usual espressos, pourovers, and array of flavored drinks were prevalent, echoing a familiar scene in the different cityscape. Time and time again, I was humbled to hear people suggesting that I open Kurasu in the city or anywhere in the States. And that would be a dream for us. And hopefully it would come true in the future. Honestly, I do see a space for us focusing on balancing products, pourovers, education, and customer service to bring something new to this vibrant coffee scene. So thank you so much, Chicago. I learned so much from you, Mew, and I hope to see you again very, very soon.